if you want to know what the book of Revelation says, it's uh, pretty easy to summarize. Basically, the world will be turned into hell on earth, and then there is hell after the earth. And that's why you need a savior. And a lot of people scoffed at this, but climate change is happening and the world is becoming uninhabitable and many species are becoming extinct. And we're seeing the weather getting crazy and the hurricanes and the tornadoes and the terrible destruction where Florida was turned recently into a place almost uninhabitable. And this kind of change is in the headlines. And activists are trying to call on governments and people to avert a global catastrophe. But it's right here in the book of Revelation. And even former Vice President Gore said that when you take a hike through the book of Revelation, you see what's going on with climate change. But I want to talk about the other part of this hellish destruction. It says there are devilish spirits which do signs and wonders. In other words, there are demonic powers. And we see the dictator of Russia hunkered down in a bunker, very demonized. And he needs to look at Revelation 16, 14. And it says, these demonic powers go to the kings of the whole inhabited world, them to gather to the war of the great day of Hashem, the Almighty. Look, I come as a thief. Blessed is the one who keeps watch and keeps his clothing so that he shall not go around naked and should not see his shame. And it says, and they did them gather. There's a demonic gathering of the kings of the earth at a place which means in uh, the holy language Mount of Megiddo. This is where we get the idea of Armageddon. And President Biden warned the world and America about a nuclear Armageddon. And of course, we know that if you look carefully at the book of Revelation, you will see that this world, which turns into a kind of apocalyptic nuclear hell from nuclear war, from that fiery mushroom cloud in the sky that we saw First of all, Nagasaki and Hiroshima, 1945, when I was two years old. Now this thing is something that seems to have a global reach. And it's in this book. And it says in Revelation chapter 6, verse 8, that millions will die by the sword, by famine, by plagues. We've already seen COVID plagues. And if you'll notice, uh, when it talks about people dying by the sword, it's really talking about warfare. How many people will die in a nuclear catastrophe? It also speaks of the martyred. Look at Revelation chapter 6, 
verse 9, the souls of the martyred under the uh, Mizbeach in heaven, the Mizbeach in heaven, the, the altar. And uh, then when you get to chapter 8, you have these trumpets. And the first trumpet blows, and a third of the trees and the grass are burned by crazy weather and fire. And it says, mix with blood. This is kind of a blood curdling picture that we're getting. But this is not something far off in the distant future. This is something that's in the headlines right now. As these hawkish dictators use their nuclear arsenals to do saber rattling to threaten the whole world. Look at chapter 8, verses 8 and 9. One third of the marine life and the ships are destroyed. Look at chapter 8, verses 10 and 11. One third of the great of the fresh waters are poisoned, killing many people. And uh, you start to see the ecological disaster that is uh, coming on the world. But then there is this demonic invasion in chapter 9. And the, and the demonic is not something that har harms the vegetation. It is the people who are tortured. They are tortured by demonic hosts. And uh, there aren't en enough exorcists to drive out all these demons. And so we want to be sealed for what is coming, my friend. And today at, in Beth Shalom, we preached about Armageddon. And we had a house, a house full of Muslim people. And I wish I could have gone into the Euphrates River more. This is a very important river in the Bible. You should do a Wikipedia study of the Euphrates River and especially look at Revelation chapter 16, where the kings of the east march their armies westward across this Euphrates River. And why are they doing this? To prepare for Armageddon. So all these dictators who are stockpiling nuclear weapons and then using them to threaten the world. These are operating right on time and right according to the script that is laid out, the prophetic book called Revelation. And I wish you could look at all the judgment bowls starting in chapter 16, verse 1, to see what is going to be poured out on the earth and the horrible malignant sores and the torturing demonic uh, entities. And uh, unfortunately, it says that many people will not repent, even though these things come to pass. But we cried out to these people today in the sanctuary. And we told them about the, the, the horrors that happened when a nuclear disaster occurred in Chernobyl back in the 80s. And we showed them from the book of Revelation that the whole world is going to become a Chernobyl. And that there's only one Savior because if the hell on earth doesn't get you in this life, 
there is the lake of fire and the hell after this earth that will get you in the next life. And the only savior is for them, the one that they know as Esau must seek peace be upon him. But we explain from the Bible using a bridge text in the Quran, if God wills, he can remove you and put in your place a new creation. We told them that they needed to become a new creature. And they needed to meditate on the wonderful picture that we have in the book of Revelation, which is the crystal sea before the throne. And there have been times in my life where I felt like everything couldn't get any worse for me. Everyone had seemingly turned on me, even though I had started three congregations and all these people had come to the Lord and there were things happening in Florida, just like they happened in Beverly Hills. And there I was on I-95, completely broke, having lost literally everything. But the Lord gave me a vision. Uh, and it's your vision because it's right there in your Bible, the Bible you're not reading, you're not studying. It's found in Revelation chapter 4, verse 6, where it speaks of a crystal sea of glass in front of the throne. And I made up a little tune to myself, and I sang this to myself over and over and over and over and over, and I spoke in tongues over and over and over, but I had my mind on heavenly things. and. Consequently, with the Lord's help, by his grace, I got through that period. And just like Job, at the end, everything was restored to me. I got everything back. Everything I thought I lost. It came right back to me, like a boomerang. And every disaster that I thought was, at the time, insurmountable, nothing is too hard for the Lord. Is anything impossible with God? And so if you want to do what it says in the book of Colossians, where it says you have died and your life is hidden with Moshiach, and you have to set your mind on things above, I would recommend that you do what I did that you set your mind on the crystal sea of glass in front of the throne. Chapter 4 of Revelation, verse 6. And receive the Lord and become a born-again believer. And then you'll be ready for whatever happens. Because, my friend, no matter how much money you have, no matter how wonderful your house is, or how glorious your life is, or how much money you have in the bank. And there were many people like that in Florida who are now looking at a, at a completely destroyed home. And they're wondering how in the world they will ever rebuild what they had before. Unfortunately, Another hurricane could come and wipe it all off again, wipe it all off the face of the earth again. So what does Moshiach say? He says, don't build your house on the sand. Because when the winds come and the rains, your house can be washed away. You must build your house on the rock. And he knew as a carpenter how to build one's house. He had built some houses. But he's talking about a different domicile. He's talking about your spiritual home. Lord, I want to thank you that you promised us 
mansions. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And many of the people that he was speaking to were martyred, most of them. And one was spared so he could write this book, the book of Revelation. But the martyrs have a glorious future. And the Lord will take care of all of his own. So, Father, we want to come to you tonight and we want to give our lives to you completely. We want to turn over our lives to you 100%. And we want to thank you, Lord, that you are the Savior of Armageddon. And that in the end, you win every battle. And we thank you, Lord, for the battles in our lives that you've already won. And we give you all the glory for the battles that you will yet win. And we give you all the praise. Yeshua, come into my heart, forgive my sins, take control of my life as my goal redeemer, my savior. And Adonainu, Moshienu, Rabbeinu,